then when I was 12 years of age, good Lord, all those years ago, first radio program I ever did was actually in Boston in the USA when I was 14. First television show I ever did was in New York, the Ed Sullivan television show, 67 million people watching it. And I was 14, for goodness sake, it's amazing, isn't it? But the one thing I uh, always did whenever I was around the biggies, the big guys, I always was on the side of the stage or on the side in the television studio watching what they were doing and what all the experts were doing with the cameras and everything else. Everybody else was in the pub. They were all in the pub drinking. And I was learning. And the most important thing I learned was a magic phrase. You want to write this down. I will never do that. If I saw anybody doing something dreadful or horrible, and I see them every night on Zoom, I will say, I will never do that. It's an amazing thing to do for yourself. Do it. And that way, you'll end up getting 3,000 quid for a gig. Honestly. Believe me. Trust me. <laughs> so let's get started. Zoom etiquette, you've heard that already. Phones and all that. Here's something nobody ever says. Alexa. Yeah. Have you ever seen a Zoom meeting interrupted by Alexa? I have. Landline. Nobody ever thinks to switch the landline off. They just pull the plug out of the wall because that will happen. It's happened to me. And here's the other thing. I never hear anybody say about the Zoom etiquette in business, which is if you want to speak, put your hand up and leave it up. Yeah, that is the way you do it. Unfortunately, in Toastmasters, I see all the time committee meetings and all, everybody jabbering, everybody, and Zoom can only handle one voice at a time. That's why you never see anybody singing live, anybody like us. We tried it. When Zoom was all in its heyday, you know, with the shares all over the place, when it all started, what, March, February, March last year, two years ago now, then Nobody knew about the, all this stuff, but very quickly all the etiquettes came into place. So put your hand up if you want to speak. Zoom have sorted out a lot of that, but you can still only have one voice at a time. Con and I started our bachelors in lockdown and all that then, and we got to know all the tricks and everything. Yeah, so I'm giving them to you. I would suggest if you're serious about this and if you're serious about wanting to earn 3000 quid for a gig, be it live or be it on Zoom, I would suggest always, always, always have a pilot's list. Now, the story is that nobody would ever take off in a 747 jumbo to go to Sydney without a pilot's list. Things you've got to do. Now, what sort of things are on my pilot's disc? Here they are. You've got to empty the cash. Yeah, empty the cash. Very important. Get your computer working as fast as it can. Empty, empty the recycle bin. Nobody ever does that. Make sure you're hardwired. None of this wireless stuff. I'm hardwired from this laptop all the way to the other side of my house, to the router. Test the microphone. We all see that notice coming up, test microphone. Whoever does, I do. And here's the way the professionals do it. Make a note of this. You must go test, test, scratch. Test, test, scratch, yeah? Because most people have got a microphone in the laptop. They may have all sorts of different microphones all over the place. I have. So you may be testing your microphone, but you don't know which one is picking you up. So very clever professional trick. Make sure the record is on. I have to do that with my brother. First Sunday of every month. And the number of times I've forgotten 
to switch on the record. Make sure that. Make sure you have the permission from the Toastmaster or the Zoom master to have the virtual screen. Lucky, I checked with Moira before this started. You may have been here when I did it. I said, may I check? The, and it wasn't on. So I would have started. Not only would I have been muted, but you wouldn't have seen anything at all. Make sure you get your backgrounds right. You have to sometimes in some clubs, you have to get permission. You have to get permission to show virtual backgrounds. Make sure you've got it. Make sure you've got the safe space bar rigged up so you can unmute yourself with the space bar. And to do that, all you need to do is just click on the mute sign, the mute microphone on the bottom left hand side. Just click it once and therefore the, your computer knows to do it. And then you will be able to unmute yourself just by clicking the space bar. A good trick and very, very few people do it. So, am I encouraging you to earn 3,000 quid for a gig? Why not? You might as well. Somebody's got to do it. And by the way, all of this is my opinion in, in this hour. But I'd have to say that's the opinion of somebody who's been there, done it, been around the block and learned from the best. 80% visual, 20% content. Golden rule in any sort of business and particularly Zoom. It's 80% visual, 80% visual. And with that in mind, what I'm going to do is just go onto my virtual screen now. And I'll show you how important all this is. And just do that. Doesn't that look much better? 80% visual, 20% content. You never hear this stuff in a 2,000 pound three day seminar that your company sends you to. You get two hours on the first day, two hours on the second day, three hours in the afternoon on breathing. How many of those things have you been to? I've been to loads. It's all about breathing. I'm sitting there saying, will somebody please tell me about speaking? Please tell me about screens. Please tell me something. I I know how to breathe. I've been breathing all my life. How many people have done that? Everybody. So, most important thing, how do you look? The camera has to be three inches above your head. Okay? Now, this originally came famously from Elizabeth Taylor. Don't know how many people are old enough. Bob is certainly old enough to remember. <laughs> Bob Nisbet, certainly old enough to remember Liz Taylor. But she famously used to carry a rule, ruler, whatever way you want to call it, a measure with her, six inches. And she demanded that the camera, there were huge cameras in those days, six inches above her head. Now, there's a reason for that, because when you're looking up, and I've got an old chicken neck, it's horrible. Mind you, Cliff Richard has got it. So has Hank Marvin, lots of my pals have got it. But if you look up, it smooths out your neck. The ladies will know about that. The ladies will know about that. So it's very important. The gold standard for all this stuff of looking good is in the UK, not in the States, I don't know who it would be in the States, but the morning shows. They've got a guy called Philip Schofield over here and Holly Willoughby. They are the gold standard of how to look on a Zoom screen, how to look on a television screen. There's one great test. <laughs> You're going to love this. And this is not being sexy, not being, oh, whatever, a little bit off the, off the edge. Not at all. Tonight, before you go to bed, get yourself in front of a full length mirror. Take all of your clothes off, every single stitch, every stitch. Look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself this question. 
would I go to bed with me? You may think that's silly, salacious, anything you like. Absolutely on the money. Would I go to bed with me? Well, that guy, Philip Schofield, in this country, looks incredible. Holly Willoughby looks incredible. Mel B, Spice Girls, famously said a great line, and I love it. She said, my body is my business. Now, for backgrounds and all that stuff, look at the morning shows. Look at the morning shows. Look at the morning shows. And remember, this is something important, Toastmasters, my fellow Toastmasters. The way you present yourself on screen is going to be part of the gallery view. You've got somebody coming along to visit your club first time and looks and it's a mess. Are they going to join your club? No. But if they see everybody with a fabulous background, looking good, fabulous, and then doing the jazz hands and all that. It looks incredible. Of course they'll join. I've seen people win area competitions with fridges in the background, doors in the background, never have a door in the background. Moira, Moira, am I right? I'm looking at you, Moira, never have a door in the background. In show business, that's the first thing you learn, first day at stage school. It's something to do, I think it's an old, an old wives' tale, really, but it's something to do with the karma going out of the room. So you'll never see a door on television, ever, unless it's in a play or a drama or whatever. But strictly speaking, you'll never see it. Earbuds or earphones. Well, all I have to do is say to you, which do you prefer? That look or that look? For what we do. Not for presenting sport and all that, that's fine. I don't think there's any competition really. You have to wear something like this. And these, I'll give you a note on these. These are the best, these are the ones I use in my, not, not the ones with the microphones, but these are the ones I use for my concerts and all that. They're called ZSN Pro, ZSN Pro. They're absolutely wonderful. So let's get on to microphones. Complicated, complicated. So what I did, here is something I prepared earlier. And this will go through everything to do with microphones. This is a quick roundup on microphones. Now, the one that's most commonly used and the one that you see mostly for good quality is this baby, which Barry Miles always refers to as a little bald man sitting in front of me. But uh, it's the one that will give the best sound and it's a condenser microphone, quite expensive. Uh, two inch gold dia diaphragm inside it and that what gives it a good sound. What you pay for is what's called the noise floor. In other words, when it's when nothing is going into it, then it is totally silent or as near totally si silent as damn it. That's what you pay for. And that's when you're recording somebody like Adele with just a piano or maybe a, a guitar player or maybe a, a whoever, just a a classical piano in a concert room. You want total silence from this baby and that's what you pay for. So that's, you know now what this sounds like and this is the top quality. Now we go on to the next most used one. The next most used one is this, which is an SM58. And this is absolutely bog standard. You'll see this in every rock show right throughout the world. It's been around since, oh, the 50s, 60s. I think about the 60s, possibly. But it's the absolute industry standard, not expensive, about 70 to 90 quid. Uh, and this, you can see how old this one. Famous advert for this one is a television advert where they had a guy actually knocking a six-inch nail into a board 
with this microphone and then just plugging it in and singing into it. And that's how sturdy they are and that's how they've got such a good reputation. You notice that my lip, my lip, lip is on the microphone and that's how to use it. M wonderful quality, but the problem is when you go more than an inch, two inch away, three inches away, you just disappear completely. Whereas with the big jobby, you could, it, there's very little difference in sound no matter where you are in the room. And that is why these are so popular in rock concerts, because it actually is a proximity microphone, so you have to be very close to it. So that means that, say, loud guitars and all sorts of stuff, drums and everything all around, are not picked up into the microphone, only the voice. Of course, what most people use is the microphone in the actual computer itself or in the camera, if you've got a separate camera, which we'll get onto later. A lot of faults to that. And the most important thing to realize is it's very, very little to do with the microphone. It's all to do with the acoustics of the room. So this now is the usual setup that anybody would have is the microphone in the laptop and with the speakers on. I, sh I don't even have to have those on because I should be able to hear everything through the speakers on the computer. The word. Of course, a lot of people will be asking about these jobbies, uh, which are very popular, very popular. And I've used them uh, when Skype started first. I was using them a lot because we use them a lot for Radio interviews, funny well, you enough, know, because it was digital sound, so it was supposedly pure sound. I've never heard a good set yet uh, on Zoom, never heard a good set yet, and I think I'll prove that point. Uh, just listen to the difference between this microphone, Logitech, you know, decent brand, wasn't cheap, wasn't cheap. And see, do you notice the difference? <laughs> <laughs> I would think you would. Well, this one I don't like at all. Uh, the sound is quite good, given that you've got tremendous acoustics here. It's the acoustics in the room. This this room, this is my studio, actually. The green screen, obviously a green screen behind me. But this is my studio, so the the the, the if you tap your hands, there's no... There's no slap back at all. No parallel walls. It's great, great. And that's what it's all about. It's very little to do with the microphone. It's all to do with the acoustics. This is the typical lounge sort of situation. Uh, this is, so you just see the acoustics, the acoustics and the lighting that you will achieve. But it's quite good, quite good lighting actually. But the acoustics are a little bit echoey. Let's go to another room. A bedroom would probably give better acoustics, but however, you've always got the, the, the mirrored wardrobes and all that sort of stuff. And you got a lot of windows, a lot of windows, and that's all always going to echo the sound. In this vestibule, totally glass surrounded, yeah? So I'm sure I can't tell what it sounds like, but I'm sure it just sounds echoey to me. And of course, this is a, a typically echoey place. And it's just, just to show you so that you hear the difference in acoustics and what proper acoustics sound like. This is awful, awful beyond belief. People think it's wonderful because it's echoey. No. For Zoom work, no, thank you very much. So here we are, back to the favourite microphone uh, that we all like to use. And of course, you notice earbuds. Because using the speakers on the computer, no, don't do it, don't do it. Sound becomes echoey and horrible. Mm-hmm. So now I should think you are all now experts on microphones. Are you? Put your hands up if you are. Come on, come on. Oh, yes, Adrian is. Definitely, Adrian is. <laughs> but uh, there we are. Playing sound. There's a question I'm asked all the time. Playing music. Playing, playing music. When Zoom started first in earnest, 
uh, February two years ago. It was dreadful. And I had to get it sorted out because my brother and, and I were putting on a music show every week for an hour. And we were desperately trying to do it live. You can't, it, you cannot do it live. We've given up completely. So everything we do now is pre-recorded. And all that stuff that you saw of Beyonce doing it live and Lady Gaga doing it live for Zoom and the Stones doing it live, you know, with them all in their different houses, it was all a con. It wasn't, it, no, you cannot do it. It's all pre-recorded. And that's what Con and I do now all the time. I know Twila and people like that, you've been on to see our show uh, every first Sunday, Sunday of the month. And that's the way we do it. But if you're going to share music on Zoom, there's just one thing you've got to remember. There used to be loads of things you've got to remember is you've got to get everything queued up first. That's what I've done today. Everything is queued up first. So that then all you have to do is click on the button to share. Whatever you do, don't do what I see in Toastmasters all the time, is clicking on the share button first and then start looking for the files and all that. It's No, you can't do it. I always want everything I do to be like the Graham Norton show in the UK, which is the top show. And everything is what you call seamless. But to do it seamlessly, you've got to, there are 13 separate clicks. 13 separate clicks you've got to do to play a video or anything with sound seamlessly. I, I have a separate video on that. If anybody wants it, just get in touch with me and I'll send it to you. But you've got to understand the most important thing, and this is where we all fall down, is when eventually you get to share, you hit that green share button there, and then you forget those two little boxes come up bottom of the screen share sound you might want to write that down share sound and optimize for video clip and they're the ones that we forget now zoom in their infinite wisdom have made a situation generated a situation where if you don't click those two boxes nobody hears anything it's crazy in my in my view i don't know whoever in zoom decided on that but why don't they make the default so that when you play the video, the sound is on as well? Simple. Let's get on to something very interesting. Stagecraft, stagecraft, stagecraft. This is all to do with stagecraft, by the way. Hands. I get asked about hands all the time. What do you do with your hands? I mean, we know all about that, you know, body movement and all that stuff. And what I always say is that hands come from your brain. I never think for one minute what my hands are doing. I love Italians because they speak with the hands. It's lovely, lovely to see them. But for Zoom work, hands do come into play an awful lot. How many times have you seen somebody speaking and they're speaking and that's going on? We've all seen that. And then the evaluator says, Oh, you, we, we really need to see your hands. Of course you do. Let me see that one. I had this huge fish the other day. And my goodness, there was something up in the sky just like that. Here's the trick. Now, you won't get this at the £2,000 seminar on small screen stuff that your company has sent us paid for and you've got away for the jolly. <laughs> Oh, by the way, there's an interesting thing. Whenever you stand up, gentlemen, close your button. All the top politicians do. You look at them all. Biden, everybody, they stand up. It's automatic, automatic. I tend to loosen a little bit. I'll do it a few times, and then I'll sound like this. That's okay. Hands, hands, hands. A good trick, as I said, that you won't get at the 2,000 pound seminar. Never use your hands more than six inches from your face. Okay? So if you notice everything I do is around there. It's all around there, yeah? You can do anything you like. Further away, obviously, the bigger you can get. Now, I'll give you a trick as well. 
I've got myself on a laptop, which is on a stand, which is up by the camera. Yeah. So I can see exactly what you see. So my hands will never stray out of the picture. But that's the trick. Six inches from your face. Here's another trick that you won't get at the £2,000 seminar. Learn what your resting face is. Learn what your resting face is. So important, I'll say it again. Learn what your resting face is. Now, what do I mean by that? It means that I did a stupid thing once. I was at a big major function. So one of my best pals was on cabaret. Fantastic, you know, huge. $300 a ticket, all that stuff. And he was on, and I was on the front row, and I was looking at him, as you do when you're concentrating. And this paparazzi guy came up and went click. And that picture of Deklosky went everywhere that anybody would know me. Oh, by the way, I've had number ones in the States as well. <laughs> so people of an age would know me. Be aware of what your face looks like when you're not performing. Mine is, that's my resting face. So if I'm doing a video and the director says, or I say to my brother or whoever, four seconds resting face, and then we start. And that's the face the editor wants to see. He wants to see that face. Look around at Toastmasters meetings and you see all this stuff. Don't do it. Again, the visitor coming to the meeting. He or she, or whatever you want to call it, they're all looking. Boys and girls are all looking at the screen with 25 people there. With all that stuff going on. No! Know what your resting face is and use it. Another quick trick, have a mobile face, okay? People speak, I've seen people, loads of people speaking on Zoom and they're just like that and they're talking like that. I went along the street and I went into the shop. As the scene from, I went across the street and I went into the shop. Would you believe it? Wow, 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 what's going on here? This is amazing. This is terrific. Now, which one is going to win the competition? More importantly, which one is going to get the $3,000 for the gig? Mobile face. Clothes. Already said 80%. 80% is the way you look. 20% is what you say. And by the way, here's a quick, quick trick. Another one that you won't get at the £2,000 seminar. How come I don't go off screen? Because I have got two boxes. Very simple. Before the show came on, I had a look and I went right there, and that's where the box is. So I don't have to look down at all. The other side, exactly the same. I don't have to think about it. Don't have to think about it at all. As regards clothes, be the best dressed person in the room. You just have to be. If you were being paid 3,000 for the gig, for the Zoom gig, for the live gig, make sure you are better dressed than the guy who's paying you the $3,000. Trust me on that. Don't ever use what are called primary colors, red, bright blue, 
bright green, all that stuff. It doesn't work. You have to have soft colors because it gives you a good complexion. Now, whether you want to wear makeup or not, gentlemen or ladies or binary people, whatever, makeup is where it's at for the guys who are earning the $3,000. You have to wear makeup. The one reason, one reason only. Let this be with you for the rest of your life. The reason we wear makeup in show business, on television and on stage, is to reflect the lights. Because I've got massive lighting in this studio. And if I didn't have makeup on, the lighting would go straight through my face. Now, if you've got a thing about makeup, and a lot of gentlemen have, don't wear it. Make sure that you've got at least a face cream on that will reflect the lights. The main thing really as regards dress is try your best. Try your best. That's what I always say, just try your best. The next thing is lighting. Lighting is very technical. So, <laughs> I have prepared something earlier, and uh, this is what I prepared. It's desperately hard trying to do this and and uh, and talk at the same time. Well, I'm quite used to it, but I've never really managed it to get it 100%. But well, there we are. This is all about lights. Lighting is the most important thing, probably in all of this lock is uh, Zoom meetings, YouTube, all that sort of stuff. It's um, the holy grail, really. If you get your lighting right, uh, the visuals are 80% of what you do. Content is only 20%, but the visuals, if you don't get the visuals right, if, if it just, just is badly lit, you're dead in the water. Took me an awful long time to learn about it. Um, I, I spent two years of my life uh, on the road doing concerts and uh, filming a video uh, with a DVD. The results were disastrous because I just simply didn't understand about lighting and I couldn't get anybody to tell me. There was nobody new really, except the top television people. And then, then of course they were using equipment that was thousands, 10,000, 20, 100,000 quid cameras. And they can, they can deal with lighting. But I then found the most important thing, and the only thing you've got to know, is you have got to light as much behind as you light in front. Once you understand that, you've got it nailed. Most people just put the lights in front and the, the face gets completely washed out. Now I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. I've got a couple of uh, big lights here on the side of me, which are pointing at the back, at the green screen, okay? Now, if I disconnect them, now I think this lighting is pretty good, pretty good. If I disconnect them, look what happens. Look at my face, it's completely washed out, yeah? It's absolutely completely washed out. But put in the lighting behind, which is exactly the same as the lighting in front, by the way. Totally natural. The easiest way to explain this is that you've seen people with on Zoom and they're sitting in front of a window. And they're, you can see the window, but their face is completely black. Yeah, it's dark. And everybody says, oh, move away from the window. Everybody understands that. Now, what I'm talking about is exactly the reverse. Okay, have you got that? So if you have no light behind you, it's black, black behind you. And then the automatic sensor in the camera will look at the overall picture and it will sense blackness. It's not lit, behind you it's not lit. So therefore it will open up the aperture and completely blast you out. That is standing in front of a window so the lighting, with no lighting behind, which I'm on about, and that completely blasts out my face, blasts out my face. 
turn around. And that was the situation. If the that's what I see most on uh, members Zoom meetings. That's what I see most, and everybody shouts, "Oh, get away from the window!" So, I would suggest the best situation is to get yourself into some situation. Mm, no, it's impossible. It's impossible. See, no matter what you do without proper lighting, it's it's just impossible to to sort yourself out. No, 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 no. No matter what way you go, you always got to be having, You're always going to have problems. So there we are. Now you're the expert in lighting. <laughs> well, are you the expert in lighting? Are you Bob? Bob Nesbitt, are you the expert in lighting now? <laughs> well, now, okay, we've done the lighting and all that. Stagecraft with the zoom camera and the zoom screen. Close-up works. Close-up works. I always feel, so long as you're, you're in the top third of the screen, and that's what the experts always say, is the top third of the screen. You're okay. Don't go like that. That looks looks wrong. And don't, that's perfect. And then down here, I see an awful lot of this. I see an awful lot of that in Toastmasters. And it's so easy to just look at yourself on the virtual screen. Get the virtual screen up. The virtual window. Virtual screen window. Bless you, Billy. Bless you, Billy. You see, I'm watching everybody. I'm like I'm like the man over Bob. I can see everybody. <laughs> but Full length works also, but you've got to have a huge amount of room. A huge amount. Of room. I've got about two meters here, and that's good because if I walk forward very slowly, little tiny steps, it looks like I'm covering a huge amount of distance. A huge amount of distance. Yeah, that's good. What I would suggest if you're working this far away, and it's almost the same as a live show now. This is where we're coming. So, okay, we've done the jacket thing. We've done the jacket, and then, okay, I open the jacket. But this is a trick that my brother and I learned so long ago from people like the Drifters when they came out first, then the Sinatra. All of these people, so I was able to stand on the side of the stage looking at what they were doing and thinking, ah, we we stole we stole the our exit for applause from the drifters when i was about 15. yeah i watched tina turner the other night and she used exactly the same walk-off routine that my brother and i have been using for 50 years and i thought to myself well done, Tina. You've learned from the best. She may have learned it from us. Don't know. If you're working this far away, learn to make pictures. Again, you won't hear this at a £2,000 seminar. But if you learn these, you could get booked for $3,000. Learn to make pictures. Think of it as a cameraman. Just taking your picture. So I can talk and I can say, I want you to listen to what I'm going to say. See what I mean? Picture that as a picture. Then I will say, picture that as a picture. It's easy, this stuff, once you know how. So make pictures, make pictures, make pictures. All the lovely stuff. Oh, my brother is incredible. He does all this stuff. You hold it for three seconds. Come in a speech. I went to Venezuela and I was in the jungle. What did I say in the jungle? This is dynamite stuff. This is $3,000 a gig stuff. Cue cards, speeches and all that. I've heard uh, the evaluations. People say, no, you were looking down. Do you know what I do? 
I'll write my notes for the evaluation as quick as I can, and then I'll lean forward. I have got a T-bar, a lighting T-bar behind my camera, and I just put it up there, tip it on. Everybody thinks I've memorized the speech. Everything I'm saying to you is behind on the T-bar in bullet point form. The only place I, I slip up an odd time, and you'll notice, is when I've got to change the videos. There's nobody, you, you really should have somebody else doing that for you. I, I don't know any way. When I'm working with my brother on the Zoom, on our Zoom shows, I can be doing this, but he's talking. So there's somebody else talking while I'm doing this. And I'm just, just going to do it now. I'm just going to set up the final one, that one there. Open that. It takes you only a minute. And by the way, here's a trick. Here's another trick. The professional people, when you're doing a video, like I am, they've always got four seconds of silence at the start of the video. And it's what I call four seconds smiling, resting face. Remember the resting face? You remember making the photographs, making the pictures? Resting face. Okay, well that's set up now, so I'm okay. I can get back to you now. Cue cards, cue cards. T-bar, that one costs £17.99, about $22. Lightweight, you don't need heavyweight. And by the way, if you're using anything with stands, like that T-bar, like all, I've got stands all over the place. I'm looking around all, and this again worth the two thousand pounds. Sandbags, because odd sods, you will be in the middle of the most important video you've ever done in your life. The important, the three thousand dollar gig, and somebody will come in and kick over the lighting stand. With those. And it costs about, I think I've paid $12 for 10 of them. You then got to go down the beach <laughs> and, and fill them up with a little spade. You fill them up with sand. But honestly, worth the weight in the gold. I don't know how I ever survived without them. Cue cards are fine up there. Bullet points on cue cards, terrific. But... If you want to get really doubly, doubly serious, you can buy yourself something like this. This is what they use on television. They use big ones on television, but with an iPad and with this, and you set up the camera inside there, and you can have all the words scrolling in front of you. That's if you want to get doubly serious. Virtual background slides. I love this. People say to me, Deck, I'm not doing it today because this is a different sort of presentation. Deck, how do you do all that stuff in the background? I said, well, it's very easy. They're just JPEGs. I do them with key Keynote. Use Keynote or PowerPoint, whatever you want. And, and then just make the JPEGs from that. So I go on to choose my virtual background and I can do anything I like. Yeah? Easy stuff, this. This is easy, but you won't learn this anywhere. For, for timekeepers, look. Simple stuff. And then when I'm doing a, 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 a major speech, I will do this sort of thing. Isn't that good? And it's just exactly as if you're in a club room, like that exactly as if you're in a club room. So there's another trick that you won't learn. Oh, I've got, I've got the wrong background up now. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and the rest of you, where am I going to find what I had originally? I may not be even able to find it, it doesn't matter. Get to know zoom.us, especially if you're the Zoom master. You have to be able to get onto zoom.us to change the parameters of everything that's going on. To organize the waiting rooms, the registration. And listen, do never, never, ever, ever 
use URL of a meeting ever because that is how the trolls, we call them actors actually in the business, the trolls find out where your meeting is and they'll come in and they'll what they call zoom blast you with all the effing and blinding and all that stuff. Yeah. Learn how to pinpoint speakers, timers. Learn about Canyo, Miro, Slido, all the O's, Prezi. That's if you want to, if you want to take it really seriously. Virtual backgrounds, I or nay. We should really get to know virtual backgrounds. But I know that a lot of people are waiting for me to start on hybrids. How we will start on hybrids. You can notice me slowing down because I'm just doing all the clicking, the 13 clicks. This is all about hybrids. Here we are. A difficult subject, very current subject. Hybrid matings. Are you for them? Are you against them? What do you think of them? Have you had good experience of them? I belong to five clubs at the moment and uh, spread all over the world, really. And I love uh, going to hybrid matings. Haven't seen a perfect one yet. Very good, most of them. But basically falling down on just little small items. So let's get to it. The best club I've come across uh, right through the world is Brisbane. Brisbane Sunrise. Toastmasters. They meet at 6 o'clock on Monday morning, their time. That comes out at about 8 o'clock on Sunday evening for us. Give them a visit. They are the best at the moment at hybrid meetings, and you'll see the best in action. I work very closely with them, and they listen to what I say because my I've been I've been in the music industry all my life, so I know sound inside out. You know, microphones, acoustics, everything. Because that's if I don't get it right, I don't get paid. That's what I always say. They've got a very natty pamphlet thing that they'll let you have that shows exactly what they do and this is basically what it's all about you can see that the room is set out in a quite a non-traditional way You've got the tables right up and down the room on each side yeah you can see the way the guys are sitting at it so they can see the speaker and they can see see the screen just moving your head and that's it. You can see from that where the uh, lighting is. They prefer that lighting because then they can dim down the room and they can see the screen better. Nice idea. Your club may not need that. Don't know until you try. This is the way the room is set out when you look at the plan of view. And you can see that the tables again up and down the room, chairs. Two laptops, by the way, two laptops. I'll get into that in a minute. Camera with the tripod on. The main points to note. There's a Jabra speaker, which is right beside the lectern on the table. And we'll get onto that in a minute. One laptop at the front where the Zoom Master sits. And he is controlling all the vision and the sound from the speaker and looking at the speaker, what we see on Zoom. The laptop at the back on the right hand side, that is for the sound on the screen. It's muted all the time, so it doesn't feed back. And that will then be connected to what I will get onto in a few minutes, speakers for the sound. At the moment, what they've got is the sound coming through that little Jabra speaker. The issue they've got at uh, Brisbane Club is the acoustics aren't good. You see from the photograph, there's a lot of windows. So that means that the sound is its like singing in a bathroom. It's echoey all the time, echoey all the time. Because the microphone, the Jabra microphone, is quite a distance away, so therefore, the Jabra microphone, it doesn't matter how good it is, it's picking up all that reverberation and echo from the room 
and just makes your voice or the speaker's voice so secondhand. And that's the problem. So it's the acoustics, not the microphone. The only way you get around that is this. You use a lapel microphone. Now, the idea I have is to pass the microphone from a speaker to speaker, or Toastmaster to speaker, whatever happens. So you walk up and you soon get used to that. Toastmaster introduces, da, 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 da. here's Charlie with the speech, da, 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 da. and he has what this is. It's a lanyard, yeah? Basic lanyard is a pathways lanyard that I've adapted, and with a clip-on microphone on it. Now, I would suggest get some gaffer tape, gaffer tape like this, and secure it to the lanyard, because you don't want any strain on that microphone. You're tripping on the wire and away you go. And by the way, I'm saying a wire, a wired lapel microphone, because you will get into problems. You, you, they're expensive radio mics, radio microphone transmitted, uh, lanyard, wireless. They're expensive. And trust me, I've been in this game a long time. They will let you down at the worst moment. So you've got to have two or three of them as backups. But this is the idea. And then when... When the Toastmaster is then introducing, it's, it's just a matter of, and here is da 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 with the speech entitled, da da Charlie Fonsborough. And he just walks up, take this off, and you just go like that. And I, I suggest this because people say, oh, you can use a clip on microphone. No, 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 no. Be respectful for the ladies. Ladies don't like all that fumbling with their, ugh, all that business. No, it's not right. And then I wouldn't, I wouldn't personally do it at all. So this is the way to do it. And you can give it a quick wipe with Dettol or whatever you're using as an antibacterial, anti-COVID, just a quick wipe and you're done and, deal, done and dusted. That is the way I would attack the sound. Now, getting on from the sound, you obviously have to hear what's on the screen. Now, the way the Brisbane are doing it is to have the Jabra, which is a combined loudspeaker and microphone. It's not very good. They spent a lot of money buying it, and I think they're too proud to admit that uh, maybe it was a mistake, that Dex got a better solution. But what I will do, and I will do it at Battle Speakers, when it becomes a hybrid club in a few weeks' time, I will have two 18-inch speakers on poles, good quality, about 200, 200 quid if you buy them right, on poles, one side of the screen and the other side of the screen, and they will come from the laptop at the back of the room, which is merely collecting the sound from Zoom, from Zoom, from the satellites and from Zoom, into that, that computer and then being sent to those two eight inch speakers will work perfectly. Big codicil to that. When the Toastmaster or the speaker is speaking live and the guy who's controlling that laptop, he has got to switch the sound off. Otherwise you will get what's called latency. You may want to write that down, latency. At the moment, that's running at 64 milliseconds. When 5G is rolled out, it'll go down to zero, very near zero. But that, but that is, is the delay. delay. You remember, you remember the, old the old days, days and, the and the phones and all, and all that, that, and you'd speak, speak and you'd hear the, the echo, echo coming, coming back. back. Sometimes you get it on Zoom. There's two microphones going on at the same time. But that's called latency. Now, to get around that, when the person is speaking, the Toastmaster is speaking, or the speakers are speaking live, all the guy at the up the screen end on the laptop just turn the sound down so you won't hear it okay you only turn the sound up on that laptop when you hear want to hear the sound from the screen as a last thing about the sound of the microphone how much to pay the cheapest possible <laughs> trust me on that i've been in this game a long time i keep saying that but i know that it's nothing to do with the brand it's to do with the microphone you may have to trial a few of them but honestly they're about 17 quid 20 quid 
$20, $15, whatever. They're pennies really in the scheme of things. And you will find the one that you like. There's something to be aware of as regards uh, the setup that you will have is that for the microphone to go in separately into the laptop, you have to have a last generation laptop where the sound and the microphone was separate. You will find them. Uh, just have a little look and you will find them. They may not be very new, <laughs> but they'll be good. They will work for you. The reason why we want the microphone going in separately to the earphone out is that the microphone will be going to the guy who's speaking live and the earphone will be for the guy operating the laptop. Yeah, make sense? Let's get on to the visuals now. You need two cameras, basically. I've seen programs and, and uh, meetings with just one camera. And no, 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 I think the two cameras are much better. You'll see it at Brisbane. And you have one camera on a tripod right in front of the speaker. The quality depends on yourself. Again, don't go for makes brands. But Logitech are very reliable. Anything Logitech has never let me down. This is Logitech I'm using at the moment. So that will show then a way up into the ether, into the clouds, into the satellites, and show it all, all around to people who are watching Zoom all around the world. The second uh, camera is at the back of the room, up by the screen, and that is picking up the ambience of the room. Yeah? Just put it on a tripod. Tripod's always better because you can leave it there and forget about it. Or you can adjust it. You can do what you like with it. But it's basically picking up the whole picture of the room. The attendees, which is lovely. And the person watching it on Zoom, just a good feeling for the meeting. The basic equipment you need, you picked up so far, you may have written it down would be camera on the tripod in front of the speaker, a camera at the back looking at the room, two laptops, one at the front, one at the back. The front one is controlling the sound coming from the speaker, and the one at the back is controlling the sound which is coming from Zoom, from the, the satellites and all that. You have to make sure all the time, as I've said before, that that sound is only on when zoom is showing on the screen when the, all the zoom people are on the screen of course there's a lot of wires but uh, i'll try and do a list of the wires you will need usb wires that sort of thing uh, sound cables but there's a few bits and pieces but realistically speaking i would say that you're looking at about oh, a thousand to 1200 to 1500 depending on what quality of equipment you need or whether you want to go for I, I prefer to go for refurbished laptops always served me well never let me down ever and to, to buy a, a new a new laptop will last you just as long as a refurbished one and the refurbished ones are usually good quality HP they're from the banks and from the, those sort of situations ICI from you know ITV television and there's good quality solid laptops that's what I would go for so let's get down to the nitty-gritty at the end of the day stuff to make a hybrid meeting successful I suggest you need four good quality tech guys four in the pool because odd sods, one of them is going to be sick or has to go to a birthday party or where I was getting married or whatever, it has to go to the Bahamas, has to go to a seminar, anything, anything can happen. That leaves you with three. Now, of the three that turn up, then one of them gets sick or has to go home because uh, the, he's got a flat tire or anything, any reason can come on. Then you're left with two. And honestly, you need two people minimum 
to operate a proper hybrid mating. I've seen them try to be operated with one. No, it doesn't work. You need two guys. One guy up the top controlling the laptop that's got the microphone coming into it and controlling all that, the vision, yeah? And then the other guy at the back who's controlling the camera at the back, not that he needs to control it, he just sets it up and leaves it. And he's, he's also controlling the, turning the volume up and down according as the guy is speaking at the front. So trust me on that, you need a pool of four techie guys. If you haven't got that, don't bother. Because you'll only give yourself grief, or it'll only go off half cocked, as they say, and it'll be a mess, it'll be dreadful. I've seen, the, I've seen the situations of just leaving the laptop at the back of the room. It's awful, believe me. It's awful. You've probably seen it yourself. It's awful. Another thing I want to touch on is the cables. Now, I haven't touched on the cables at all, but I will give you a list of the cables that you will need. You probably want more anyway. But the main thing is, when you're jointing cables, because you will be of necessity using eighth-inch plugs and sockets and they are prone to letting you down especially 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 when you're jointing when you use well i think that's just about hilarious i was demonstrating how bad eighth inch connectors were and that one let me down when I went to check it in my studio <laughs> there was no sound the sound went off as I was showing you that well that's the way we um, safety them off just a cable coming in that's from the microphone and then you go up put it into the jointer and then tape it up with a bit of electrical tape is about the best and the, I find that's the best the other thing is that the other end where you're plugging it into the laptop needs to be really what we call in the, in the music industry safety off in other words we bring the cable up and then we tie it onto something like the the tripod or the stand or whatever the leg of a chair anything and then bring it up to the laptop so there's so many trips over the wire wherever they're not going to pull the plug out and damage the plug or even worse the other thing to bear in mind that when you're jointing any sort of a wire along uh, XLR cables, which are sound cables, uh, USB cables, for instance, always tape them together, tape them together. That's what we always do in the music industry for safety, because if it goes wrong for me, I don't get paid. So I'm in the business of getting everything absolutely perfectly right. I didn't get that right tonight, though, did I? <laughs> and I hope I've covered everything there is i think i have uh if there's anything you have left out or anything you want to ask me just go for it in the q and a's and that would be really good so see you in the q and a's and this has been the art of hybrid meetings now you're all experts and then my camera has gone a little bit wrong that's better that's better that's better that's better that's better that's oh. the end and over to you i see well thank you that's a very gracious deck uh, and uh, i gives me a chance to say thank you again so uh, it's a wonderfully professional presentation and something very very relevant for i would say all of us i mean i'm a member of capital communicators and we are running hybrid meetings already they're pretty good but We've said a lot tonight, which we can learn from in addition. So uh, my proposal is that if you want to say something, then just unmute and just say your name and I'll, I will call out whoever you know, happens to do that first. So off we go. Yeah, this is JD from the USA. Is there any way when we are zooming to stop the blur if we make quick gestures? Or is it just my webcam? You know, you wave like this and uh, it, it looks like something from outer space. Is there a way other than slowing down our gestures that we can get rid of that? 
No. Thank simple you. Answer, a simple answer. <laughs> yeah, I've I've learned over the years. You've got to, you got to do that. You got to do that. If you do that, this is a very very good camera. It's short. This is running at thirty frames per second, which is very fast, and it's still you can see it's stopping in all time. But really, genuinely, if you're if if you're doing that, you're doing it wrong. So literally, anything like that is perfect. And that was a lovely question. Thank you. Next Thank one. Thank you. Billy Thomas uh, from Dayton, Ohio. Hi, Billy. Hi, uh, Deck. Uh, you, I saw where you said use two cameras. How are the two cameras hooked? Are they all hooked in? Can you explain uh, how you switch back and forth between the two cameras or are they plugged into one laptop, the two laptops? No, I think you misunderstood. This is this is going is being recorded and it'll be edited. Then you'll be able to watch it again. And I did take it very, very slowly in explaining this. The two laptops, one of them is at the front. Yeah. So the front camera that's looking at the Toastmaster or the speakers goes into that laptop and that is connected to Zoom. That's transmitting that stuff, yeah? Yes. The other laptop is pulling the sound down from Zoom okay. and it's fed into the speakers at the back so uh -huh. that when the live people are looking at the screen where the Zoom people are like now, then the sound would be coming up out of those speakers. But this is where it's important that the guy at the back operating that, ca that laptop, not only is it muted, but he is also ha has to have his finger on the level button. So that then wh when the person is speaking from the front, the Toastmaster or the speaker into the other you know, microphone, then this is switched off yeah otherwise you would get feedback and we know all about that and that was why in my last video i demonstrated and i was so pleased that it came over exactly the way it would if you had the volume up on the laptop at the back of the room i hope that explains it billy but listen you, you my details are everywhere deck at make don't be afraid to just email. I answer every email. Proud boasts I have. Is that okay, Billy? Yes, I will I will send you an email. Yes. Liz next. Thank you. Uh, I can see where it would be beneficial for people to learn how to run the tech. But my concern would be that eventually you get people who have fatigue, they're tired of having to get their 20 minutes early to set it up to take it down. I'd rather be the one sitting home in my pajamas zooming in. Uh, is the hybrid just a pandemic measure or they have a lot of money invested in this equipment too. What's their long-term game? And they don't, not, not to be rude, but it doesn't seem like they have a huge membership to offset the cost and all the work they're doing for these, what was it, maybe nine people they're zoomed in. How do you know if it's worth it? I totally understand that. I totally understand that. And I've been, been a great watcher in what TI, Toastmasters International, what their advice has been. And this is just my opinion, my opinion only. The advice from TI has been zero. Yeah. What I do feel and I see happening is that the, for instance, the clubs I go to, the people actually attending live, they're lucky if they get three or four or five people, honestly. So that's going down. The number of people who are watching on Zoom, that is also going down, but I think it's going to level off because people are suffering from Zoom fatigue. You've heard that. People at work all day long. Adrian's nodding his head. You were at, what do I need to go on to two hours of Zoom for? But I do feel that that's the way the organization is going. And I do feel at the end of the day, you will get some diehard live meetings. I'm trying to resurrect battle speakers at the moment. And believe me, it's hard. 
it's hard to resurrect a live meeting or to start a live meeting because nobody wants to go. I don't want to go. And I'm the president. I don't want to go. I won't go to any other live meeting. Why should I go to battle? Well, I have to. I'm the president. So what is the elephant in the room is this problem, the, the dual problems, the Zoom problem. And, and then, of course, in the background, you've got the, the, the pathways problem that rears its head on. Oh, I don't like pathways, so I'm not going to go. So you've got all that. But I do feel the future of our organization, the long term future of, of Toastmasters International, and I do hope Toastmasters International will say this sometime in the near future. The future is going to be the hybrid meeting, but one in a professional way. I always say, I always say this, we have got a show in the UK called the Graham Norton Show. You may get it in the States. Go onto your laptop, put in Graham Norton Show and have a look at it. That is the gold standard of what you would call a hybrid meeting because he has people on the screen and he has people live. And that is a good, but to, a, to get to that stage of perfection, they have 10, 12, 14, 20, 30 people, technicians in the background doing it. And this is where I emphasized in that last video, the minimum of four highly, highly efficient techie people who are willing to come, not just five minutes before the meeting, well, 45 minutes before the meeting, because that is the length of time it will take to set up that equipment properly. And then, of course, you've got the situation of what we call striking it in our business, taking it down and putting it away. So you've got to have four highly dedicated people. Where are we going to get those? Brisbane have them. All right, thank you. Mine is quick. What was the name of that first microphone that you had that was such a great sounding microphone? <laughs> As I said in the video so many times, it has nothing to do with the microphone. Manic Speaks Preachers, they recorded a complete album on that crappy SM58 microphone. But well, that microphone sounds like that because of the acoustics. And, and that's for it. But for your information, it was a Shure KSM KSM 27. Thank you. And it, it is my favorite. And, uh, I see uh, Antonita from Peru. Are you there? Hello. Yes, th thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That. Uh, my question is, you mentioned a T-bar, and sometimes they use note, if there's a word that being English, my second language, if there's a word that I might have a pearl, I may put a little note besides the, the, the camera, but on the screen, but you mentioned a T-bar, a tool. Is there a way they could show it or maybe send a photo to the chat? I would appreciate it. Just describe it very easily. It's what we put lights on. So it's a bar going up, a tripod bar going up, and a T on the top. That's all it is. And then the lights Great. go on the top. But you can see, because it's a, a bar across like that, you can pin or whatever way you want it, masking tape, anything you want. Clips, look. Clips, yeah? You just clip on as many A4 pages as you want. Nobody can see them, and you just glance. The trick is, here's the, the last trick I'll leave you with. <laughs> the trick is to, when you want to look at your notes, is to go far away. And then the, nobody knows that you've gone off camera. Can you see me going off camera? Great trick. No. Great, thank you. Sorry, just Google, just put it into Google, lighting T-bar, and don't pay more than $20, $25 for it. Very lightweight, good for the job. Okay, well, there, now there's a man who will be a favorite of our treasurer who keeps a BDI on costs. 
I, I coined the phrase, we are in this business, music industry, we are in this business to make money, not to spend money. <laughs> yes, well, it, it happens that part of my pension money comes from EMI. So uh, no doubt the bachelors are still contributing to that. So thank you very much. <laughs> Just to say that if you enjoyed tonight's show, that my name is Jack Klusky. But if you didn't enjoy tonight's show, my name is Mark Zuckerberg. And give each other love every day.